it seems like Earth had a very long time, like not a very long time without life, mm -hmm. and then a very long time with very primitive life. Um, maybe I'm discriminating, calling bacteria primitive life. Yeah, but, people would object to you yeah. <laughs> doing that for sure. <laughs> but it seems like complex organisms, when you start, starts becoming something like, um, I don't know what's a good, uh, not animal-like, but more complexity than just like a single cell. Um, what what do you think is the magic there? What's the hardest thing? If you were trying to engineer Earth and build life and build the simulations, obviously we're living in a video game, what this is. Mm. So if you're trying to build this video, what's the hardest part along so, this evolution so pathway? So bacteria are mostly single cells. They do make colonies. They get together in biofilms, which are really important. Mm. But they're all single bacteria in that. And the key is making an organism where cells do different things you know we have skin cells and eye cells and brain cells and bacteria never do that and the reason is probably energy bacteria don't can't make enough energy to do that and so there was another cell existing at the time the archaea mm -hmm. and the idea is that a bacteria went into an archaea and became the modern day mitochondria the energy factory of the cell and that now led that cell develop into more and more complicated organisms like we have today. It was all about energy. So the mitochondria, the energy, uh, the mitochondria is the magic thing. I think so. It's actually not my idea. It's Nick Jones. Have you heard of Nick Jones? He's an evolutionary biologist in the UK. And he's he's done experimental work on this. And it's his idea that the defining point was the ability to make a lot of energy, which a mitochondria can do. It's basically a whole bacteria inside of a, a bigger cell, and that becomes what we now call eukaryotes, and uh, uh, that they can get more and more complicated. So let me bring you back to the viruses. I want to yeah. finish that story. Yeah, which points of viruses come along? So remember, we have these precellular, they're called precellular replicons, right? And um, so we have a precellular stage where we have these self-replicating molecules, and then cells arise, and then the self-replicating molecules invade the cells. Be why? Because it's a hospitable environment. I mean, they didn't know that. They just went in and it turned out it was beneficial for them. So it stuck. And they replicate inside the cell now where they have pools of everything they need. They get more and more complicated. And then they steal proteins from the cell to build a protective shell. Right. And then they can be released as virus particles. They're now protected. They can move from host to host. And because they're at the earliest stages of cellular evolution, they can diversify to, to infect anything that arises. And that is why I think <laughs> there's so many of them and everything on the planet is infected because the ancestor of everything was infected many years ago. So it's easier to steal than to build from scratch. So like it's easier to sort of break into somebody else's thing and yes. steal their proteins. Yes. <laughs> My colleague Dixon de Pommier calls viruses safe crackers. Safe crackers. So <laughs> it's just uh, from an evolutionary perspective, it's yeah, it's it's easier to steal because you can select, but then you have to figure out mechanisms for stealing, for breaking into, for, for cracking the safe. Well, you don't have to figure out; it just happens, right? Because molecules are so diverse that a molecule gets into a cell, and if there's a protein that sticks to it, it's going to stick. And that gives an advantage. There's no, you know, there's no planning. There's no thinking about it, right? It just happens. 